hey hi hello everyone i'm naval yemul welcome back to my youtube channel data master so i'm going to create a separate playlist on databricks sql specializing for the data analytics or the business intelligence people so we are going to talk about all the capabilities of the databricks sql starting with the sql warehouses then we'll proceed to the sql editor queries dashboardings and uh, latest features called genie we are going to see all that in the playlist so just stay tuned and now we are going to start with the databricks sql so i keep on telling you when it comes to databricks databricks is for all the data people if you are someone who is looking for a data engineering workload like doing a complete etl doing a task orchestration workflow management monitoring yes databricks is for you and if you are talking about something on the machine learning side i want to build a model i want to do a prediction forecasting yeah databricks offers for machine learning also and apart from data engineering and machine learning yes databricks offers something for the data analytics people also like we have a databricks sql so you can do all the data warehousing in the databricks and it's not just a data warehousing it's an intelligent data warehousing you can do all the modern things here uh, like if you compare it to any other tool in the market databricks sql warehousing comes at the top where you have all the ai capabilities so in this session we are going to talk about from the scratch starting with the databricks sql warehouses moving to the completely uh, creating a dashboard talking to your data by using a jenny we are going to talk about lot of ai features in it so databricks SQL is an intelligent data warehouse. You can call it as a modern data warehouse. So this is designed specially for the data analyst people or a business intelligence people, or I can say for the stakeholders also. So those who were using some BI tools to get the uh, answers from their data, but now you can just stick to the Databricks and you can get all your answers to your data. You can just I'll give you the link for this uh, Databricks SQL product document page you can just check it we will talk about the pricing we'll talk about the details also as we proceed further now let me jump to the databricks so here you have a databricks sql warehouse as we know if you want to start anything in the databricks for example if you start with the notebook you need a compute in the same way when you start with the sql we need a sql warehouses but let me tell you the capabilities of the sql warehouses if you start your sql warehouse you can even attach to your notebooks also let me show you how so you can start creating a warehouse here just hit on create sql warehouse and the moment you click on create sql warehouse it's asking you for your warehouse name so i'll just give a serverless serverless sql and it's asking you to choose your cluster size your cluster size will be same like your t-shirt size it starts with small medium large 2x and so on uh, excel 2xl and so on let me keep it very minimal that is 2x small just for a uh, training purpose but depending upon your use case depending upon how much data you're going to process how many queries you're going to run it how many people you're going to uh, you're going to use this warehouse depending on that you can choose the cluster size we have an auto termination here like auto stop you can keep it as low as five minutes so just in case if you are not using your compute in five minutes it will be terminated unlike all-purpose compute serverless i mean databricks sql serverless will just take only few seconds to spin so all-purpose compute takes approximately four to five minutes to start the startup time is more but the serverless the startup time is very less because you don't need to worry about how many cores you want how many driver uh, how many uh, core for the driver how many workers you want how many executors you don't need to worry about anything it's serverless serverless indicates all the infrastructure is taken care by the databricks you just focus up focus to your logic or focus to your data everything all the infrastructure is taken care by the databricks now you can see here if you are comparing with the all purpose compute we have so much of configurations but here we don't need any such configuration very simple just give a name choose the cluster size you want 
choose the auto stop time you can scale up minimum to maximum let me keep it simple and we can choose a type called serverless so let me just try to hit on this it takes hardly one or two minutes to create a configuration it's not more than that and then it's asking me for the permissions so you can set up a permissions like if you have a group of people or you have uh, multiple users you can choose them and you can give them a uh, permissions like they can use this warehouse they can monitor it or they can even manage it means they can scale up and scale down so now i do not have any user in this account i'll just cancel this and wow you can see that within few seconds your sql warehouse has been started and it's up and running you can go back to your sql warehouse and it started here so what databricks is trying to do is they are just keeping the all their computes ready with them so whenever you are requesting whenever the user is requesting they'll just provide it to you okay the cost when you compare it to the all-purpose compute is a bit higher we will talk about the cost maybe after a few sessions now i'll just click on stop the warehouse even you can manually stop this by just clicking on this stop button and you can see that it's terminated immediately i just wanted to show you the startup time here so when i click on start your sql warehouse it should not take more than five seconds to start so let us wait and wow can you see that it started now now you can start using your sql warehouses to your sql editor you can go to your editor and you can start writing a queries here by using this sql warehouse that is one thing or even you can go to your workspace you can create a new notebook i'll just create a notebook from here and in the notebook we have an option to choose from all purpose compute even you can choose it from your sql warehouse and remember it's a serverless sql means it just accepts all your sql code so even you can write all your sql scripts in the notebook via using the serverless sql so let me show you i'll just use for example let me use select star from your table name let me take a table from this i have one project here ecom project let me take any table and let me try to query this this works amazing can you see that you don't need a all-purpose computer to run it even you can switch it to the sql warehouses in the notebook and start using it now you need to remember one thing it's a serverless sql or a sql warehouse only sql commands work in the notebook if you are trying to use person python this will not work can you see that if you're writing person python it throws you an error saying that only sql queries run in the notebook and not python and scala codes only sql work now you might be thinking like okay then we are already using notebooks we are already using all purpose compute in all purpose compute we have a feature called person sql we'll switch it to the person sql and we'll start using a sql so what's the big deal in it so why you want to want us to switch to the sql warehouses so i'll repeat again it's majorly focusing for the data analytics the people those who are coming from a sql background people those who are coming from a database data warehousing background they feel like notebooks are a bit difficult if they come to the notebook they feel like we need to learn python we need to know what is spark you need to understand how the spark engine is working and so on so they feel a bit difficult so if you want a complete warehousing feature like a complete warehousing ui so you don't need to go to the notebook so we have a sql editor so people those who are coming from the analytics background they don't need to switch to the notebook and learn all about python and pyspark you can come to this sql editor and your ui looks something like this it's so simple anyone can understand it can see here it is divided into three different sections on the left side you have a catalog so yes the catalog what we were working on it is similar so that the data engineers uses this schemas to create the tables then he creates a views on top of it functions now a uh, data analytics let us try to connect these dots your data analytics now just take these tables and start querying it start doing the analysis on top of this data so you just need a table name and is using the same catalog what the data engineers were using because the catalog is only one 
you have only one catalog and even if machine learning people are also using the catalog they'll also save it to the same catalog or the same schemas means even you can save a models to the schemas so we have already seen when it comes to a hierarchy you have a catalog you have a schemas you have a table views models and then the functions we have volumes also so you can store all that into the schemas now just think in the perspective of a bi or a data analytics you want to start querying the data well just go here let us try to pick up a table any table for example customer silver i'll just click on this customer silver and you can see the table name is here now we did not get a two level namespace or a three level namespace here the reason is we have already selected the correct catalog and the correct schema so the customer silver is in this catalog and is in this schema so it did not give me the two level namespace now let me just take select star from the table name and just try to hit the run it doesn't take much time just a simple sql query and cool you can see you got your output here you get all the statistics like how much seconds this took to execute how many records you got it you can run top th thousand records just to keep the query time very minimal you can see the raw results here and you get lot of other information if you just click on this arrow you can download it to your csvs even you can download to the excel but we don't recommend to download it and do the analysis outside the databricks you can just stick to the databricks sql you can do lot of things here because you can do the quick filtering here you can do a filtering even you can go uh, sorry you can do the sorting from here and you can do the filtering from here so i'll show you how we can use this ui to start adding a filter and there are so many ai capabilities here we have an ai assistant here we have an ai assistant here and when we proceed further to talk about the dashboards and jenny it's all about the ai we are going to discuss that also so once you write a query you can start saving this query by just sitting on this save button so now what i'll do i already have saved this test query i'll just copy this query and i'll take a new tab so you can just get a new tab by just clicking on this plus button and once you click on this plus button you can see create a new query just hit on this create new query and you can just paste it and now if you look at this it is selecting a catalog but the schema is by default schema but our schema is something called ecom project so you have to use a two level namespace otherwise it simply throws you an error let me show you you can see here it throws you an error because customer silver is not present in the default schema so you need to use a two level namespace here or you can switch this to a proper schema okay customer silver table is in this schema and let me try to run this and when you run it you can see you got your output now you can do filtering you can do sorting you can do grouping joining all sql commands you can go deep and do a window functions you can do the analytics even you can create a tables from this yes you heard me right even you can create a tables from this simply you can use a cta statements and even you can create a table from your sql queries or if you uh, know a bit of how to handle the raw data csvs and jsons even you can take that sql queries and then create a table on top of this so once you write your queries and if you want to save it just go here and click on save button and you can uh, once you click on save it's asking you where do you want to save your queries so you can create a folder here or you can just go to a specific folder and save it but now i'll just save it to a query uh, saying silver customer this is a customer silver table i'll just say customer silver and save this so your queries are again getting saved in the same workspace where we used to save our notebooks your folders and so on okay, so your queries are saved once the queries are saved we get a beautiful feature in the sql editor called scheduling i don't think so we have any other tool in the market that helps you to do the scheduling on the sql editor but here we have that feature you can just click on the scheduling and let me click on add a schedule and you can refresh this i mean you can run this query 
every minute every hour and so on even you can go and create your cron depending upon when you want to refresh this or when you want to schedule this maybe only on weekends or maybe only on a particular day particular time you can do that or you can pick up the scheduling feature from here you can say every minute i want to refresh this i'm going to take a timestamp utc timestamp maybe 5 30 india time 5 30 and let me just hit on create now this will keep on running every one minute as we have scheduled it for one minute so we don't need to pay any additional for these features because we are already using a serverless so with the help of that serverless this query will run every one minute but we do not have any data that is coming from your data lake uh, for example we do not have any raw data if we would get a raw data we would run a dlt pipeline so this table was created by using a dlt pipeline once you run a dlt pipeline then you can do a quick refresh on top of it so we can attach all this in a workflow you can do it in a workflow and you can refresh everything from getting a data ingesting it transforming it and then creating a goal layer and top of that you can start querying that data yes you can do all refresh in the workflows so we will talk about a use case end to end creating in the workflows now this will keep on running it every one minute every one minute you can get a refresh of this but i could not show you the count or any uh, aggregation because we are not updating the data in real time okay this is just a feature i'll go here i can just uh, pause this there is no new data coming in so now i'll just pause it maybe once we upload some raw data we can do we can test this scheduling feature or now i'll just delete it okay so we have these features you can write all your sql queries here now once you saved it you can see we have a tab called queries tab let me just click on the queries tab in the queries tab you get all your queries that you have saved it you can see who saved this uh, by whom it was created and at what timestamp it was created if you had it some tags you can see here if you have thousands of queries you can mark them as favorite and you can later on view them in the filter tab by using a favorites and you can see them all in the favorites tab now if you are a workspace admin and if you are collaboratively working together you can visit the all queries also you can check your teammates your uh, your other people's queries all in this all queries tab so you will find out who created it at what timestamp they created it even you can access their queries by just hitting on this query tab so this is how we can save the queries and you can view them later on in the queries tab and we have this sql editor it's an editor you can start writing all your sql queries here you can separate it by using a semicolon and you can keep on adding a queries here you can save them and you can later on view them in the query tab so this is a start of the sql warehouse where we have seen how to start using a sql editor and queries but that's all for this video guys thank you for watching i hope you enjoyed and i hope you got an understanding like how databricks sql warehouse is used now in the next video i'm going to talk about uh, creating a dashboard using the databricks sql and then we are going to talk about the ai bi capabilities called Jenny, and then i'm going to show you about the query history also just stay tuned if you like my content i request you to please support me subscribe to my channel and share it with your friends thank you happy learning Bye bye